25 years ago today, on April 1st, 1997, the Pokemon anime made its iconic debut, introducing the world to Ash Ketchum of Pallet Town. To celebrate such an occasion, it's only right we talk about what our boy loves the most, battles. So in this video, we'll be counting down the top 25 best battles from the Pokemon anime. And because this is such a special occasion, I will not be doing this alone. Joining me are many of my amazing friends from the AnyPoke community. So introduce yourself, guys. Oh god, okay, that was a mistake. That was a mistake. We'll do this one by one. For almost a year now, all of us have been working behind the scenes, rewatching iconic battles, coming up with our own top 25, and then averaging it out to give you all a subjective ranking. That's right, this list isn't just reflecting my own favorite battles, but everyone else's as well. I think it made for a pretty interesting list if I do say so myself. Shout out to Elite Trainer Mark who helped me organize these big group of creators, as well as Crasher Plays and Reacts for coming up with this amazing idea in the first place. And alright, now that we got the introductions out of the way, let's get started. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, this is PD Gaming, and I'm honored to bring you the number 25 battle on this list, Ash vs. Claire. Gym battles were standard affairs in the anime for such a long time, so it's difficult for them to make this list unless they provide something really intriguing in terms of the story or the battle that has meaning. And luckily, Ash vs. Claire has both. There's a four part arc that takes place before the gym battle, setting everything in motion. There, we learn about Claire as a person, we learn how strong she is as a trainer, and we get to see the return of Charizards. All this leads up to the actual gym battle. Because we saw all of the pieces come together for this battle in the previous three episodes, it sets up this battle to be unforgettable. The battle even starts off with a surprise as Ash brings back his Snorlax. At first, he looks like he's gonna struggle as Kingdra's advantages in the pool shine through. However, Kingdra tires out with the combination of Snorlax's endurance as well as its quick thinking on Ash's part, including a very memorable dodge in midair. And once that's done, Snorlax KOs Kingdra with a single ice punch. Then more memorable events. Charizard evaporating the water that Dragonair sits on and of course the best moment of all, the flaming seismic toss. So overall, the animation, while not crazy, is pretty good. The setup is well built, leading to an awesome climax that's unforgettable, and all of this leads up to one of the most memorable and fun battles of the early anime. Hello everyone, it's the Insane Game Freak here, and the number 24 top fight is Ash vs. Tobias. Oh, f now I get to defend this fight? <sighs> Alright, let's do it. So let's get this out of the way first. Yes, we know, Ash was cheated. And her, 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 troll bias. But the fight is pretty good, all things considered. If you consider how strong legendary Pokemon have been portrayed in the anime, I always considered it a major feat that Ash took down a Darkrai and a Latios with a team of six. The great thing about Darkrai fight is since Darkrai was the Pokemon Ash saw the most of, he was able to plan around him, which was shown by Ash teaching Heracross sleep talk and having Gibble use Rock Smash. Even his strongest bonds are shown with Sceptile waking up after just getting Dark Voided, and in Pikachu's fight versus Latios when Swag Ash returns. For those who don't know, Swag Ash is when Ash turns his hat backwards like a mother boss. Anywho, Pikachu was in his bag and he managed to tie with Latios. Now with all these pauses I'm mentioning, you're wondering, dear viewer, why is this battle still so low? Well, why in the f*** did the writers think it was fair to throw a trainer in the anime who only has legendaries? After that climactic battle with Paul, did you guys just give the f*** up? Also, Torkoal, Swallow, what in the flying hell were y'all doing? I'm not too surprised that Torkoal got f considering he's f***ing worthless and because Torkoal never gets any real wins, but Swallow! You are the best bird! Super! Also, why in the f is this fight even here? Best wishes has plenty of fights better than this. This is some bullshit. <laughs> okay, okay, I think that's enough for this entry. Let's uh let's just move on to ones that aren't as controversial. What's up, Ginger Cornets? Here at number 23, I'll be discussing Ash and Volkner's Ultra Class Battle. Now, right from the start, this battle showed us just what being in the Ultra Class means. Unlike Ash's past PWC battles, which all just kinda happened on the spot, this was an officially scheduled battle with an entire crowd of fans watching. It really makes Pokemon battles feel like a type of spectator sport. As for the battle itself, we're reminded just how tough Volkner is. He's Sinnoh's strongest gym leader, and it shows. Unlike their previous gym battle, both sides were allowed to switch their Pokemon, so it was truly a battle on equal footing. 
A big highlight of this battle was that we got to see Lucario really shine. This was its first big match since evolving, and it certainly did not disappoint, with it knocking out two of Volkner's Pokemon back to back. Wish I could say the same for Gengar, but hey, at least it put up a good fight. One small moment I really liked was when Lucario cured itself of paralysis, just as Pokemon can do in the games if they have a strong bond with their trainers. It was a nice touch. But of course, the meat of the battle was its finale, with Pikachu vs Electivire. While this seemed like a super unfavorable matchup, with Motor Drive nullifying half of Pikachu's moves, of course, you can always leave it up to Ash to find a way around these situations. In this case, he brought his Z-Ring from Alola, along with the one-of-a-kind Pikachu Pikachunium Z. Now this was awesome. Up until this point, Ash had just kinda left his Z-Ring at home, and I don't think the writers could've picked a better time for him to bring it back than against arguably the strongest Electric-type gym leader. Using 10 million volt Thunderbolt, Pikachu was able to overcharge Electifier's motor drive and take the knockout. It defied basically everything we thought we knew, and I loved it. This was an awesome conclusion to an already action-packed battle, as well as a great reintroduction to Z-moves. And with Ash continuing his climb in the Ultra class, I don't think we've seen the last of Pikachu's 10 million volt Thunderbolt quite yet. Hello everybody, my name is Gongamars and I'll be going over number 22, Ash vs Nolan. After the Horn League, Ash meets Scott at Viridian City and tells him about the Kanto Battle Frontier, at which point the Battle Frontier arc begun and the first stop was Nolan at the Battle Factory. And after deciding on what Pokemon Ash wants to fight, he chooses Articuno. Knowing how powerful the opponent, Ash decides to bring back his Charizard for this fight. This is an incredible battle for Ash as this marks the first official battle against a legendary Pokemon and Charizard coming back to fight in one of his toughest battles. Nolan shows how skilled a Frontier Brain should be as they are known to be in the same strength as the Elite Four, according to Scott. With some incredible combos Articuno has done like combining Ice Beam and Water Pulse to cause extra damage for Charizard and using Mist to give a surprise attack, there were some incredible moves done by Articuno and Nolan's teamwork. Of course, Ashy Boy showed his determination and passion to win as during the battle, Ash saved a new move that Charizard learned, till it was crunch time. Revealing that Charizard learned the move Overheat. And even though it didn't hit Articuno, it did help unfreeze Charizard's wings from the Ice Beam. In the end, Charizard was able to withstand a Steel Wing and then go for his iconic move, Seismic Toss. You know Dean's got real when Charizard went for that move. This was an amazing win for Ash and Charizard after its fight in the Johto League. This battle would also mark the first time Ash has ever been a legendary Pokemon, a fact that is just incredible. Ash told us all, even legendaries better watch out cause he will find a way to overcome them all. Hello everyone, Ozimitsu here, and I'm super excited to talk about the next battle on the list. Coming in at number 21 is Ash vs Stefan from the infamous Unova League. Throughout the series, Stefan and Ash had this burning friendly rivalry. Their interactions had never disappointed. The Unova League battle is where it all came down to. To me, it felt like the situation where you're playing a fighting game and it's the final round where you need to pull out all the stops. Both of them worked so hard to get where they are and they owed it to themselves to showcase their talents. The stakes couldn't get any higher here. One of the best aspects of this battle was the contrast in each Pokemon. First we had the battle of two dark types where the victor would be decided on strength alone. Then Ash had a type advantage where you'd think he had it in the bag, followed by an unexpected reversal of fortune when Ash was left with just Crocodile. The roller coaster of emotions, twists, turns and the overall pacing of the battle kept it very exciting. Another enjoyable part of this battle was Ash's Levani. The commentator described its battling perfectly. Levani did float like a butterfly and stung like a beedrill. Stefan's quick thinking to use Levani's Exeza to his advantage made me love this battle. Stefan is usually quick tempered and rushes a battle when he's losing. He really thought carefully about his every move and showed how much of a better battler he became. I know you're not supposed to cheer for Ash's rival but the growth Stefan showed in this battle as a viewer made me feel so proud of him. The final showdown was the cherry on top, Stefan Sork against Crocodile with a type disadvantage. It was a disaster waiting to happen. I screamed when I first watched this battle when Crocodile revealed Aerial Ace. The way Crocodile and Sork charged at each other, followed by a graceful jump by Crocodile to gain some momentum before landing that beautiful, super effective Aerial Ace was cinematic excellence. The battle was the perfect conclusion to Ash and Stefan's rivalry. It flawlessly showcased both Ash and Stefan's growth and I couldn't have asked for a better conclusion. Hey everyone, it's Polly's World, aka Polly from the Pokepod. 
Coming in at number 20 is one of my favorite battles in the entire anime, and arguably one of the best gym battles of all time. Ash vs. Maylene. Now there's two major reasons as to why I think it belongs on this list. First off, this battle concludes an arc that ties into multiple storylines, which added to Ash, Maylene, and even Dawn's character development. Prior to this battle, Dawn and Maylene helped boost each other's confidence, which had wavered due to many previous losses. During that episode, Paul's brother Reggie helped Ash's Staravia learn Brave Bird, which helps Ash defeat Maylene's Meditite in his gym battle. Having Reggie of all characters help out Staravia was an awesome parallel to Dawn helping Maylene get her mojo back. Not only that, but Type Wild is also featured at this moment of victory, and everyone knows that when Type Wild begins to play, some serious shit's about to go down. One of my favorite things about this battle, particularly Weasel vs Lucario, is that it has no fluff or gimmicks. It's head-to-head -head combat that keeps you on the edge of your seat. Lucario did not hold back with its Bone Rush, Force Palm, and Aura Sphere attacks. And neither did Weasel, using its speed and the skills it learned from both Ash and Dawn to match Lucario's power. It was incredible seeing Buizel using the spinning aqua jet it learned from Dawn, combined with the water pulse it learned during this very battle, to clash with Lucario's force palm in a brutal fight to the finish. Ultimately, it ends in a draw, which I think was a believable and genuine conclusion to a hard-fought battle on both ends. I also love the aesthetic of this battle taking place in the rain. At one point, the roof caves in from being hit with multiple attacks, and that's when Weasel's Swift Swim ability is activated, enhancing its speed and enabling it to dodge Lucario's attacks with ease. Another element I liked was the OST used during this match. It was a nice touch in referencing Sir Aaron's Lucario in Lucario and the Mystery of Mew. Overall, this gym match and other pieces from this arc taught a valuable lesson that trainers and their Pokemon engaging in good sportsmanship and helping each other out can make both sides stronger, together. Hey guys, it's Aleximo, and I'm going over number 19, Ash vs Misty, one of my favorite battles from the Sun Moon anime. I honestly never cared for Misty as a character back in the original series of the anime. She had a few enjoyable episodes throughout Kanto, Orange Islands, and Johto, but not enough for me to feel like she actually had a ton of character development compared to the other companions. Her battle in Sun and Moon really fixed this issue for me though, as we really got to see her development as she mastered Mega Evolution. She also had explained how her Rain Dance and Hurricane strategy was so strong that no challenger could ever defeat it, which really had showed how strong she had become on her journey to becoming a master of water Pokemon. Also, I absolutely loved how this battle characterized Misty. Having her and Ash go all out of this battle as best friends showed how much they had improved as trainers in their time apart, but also how much they platonically cared for each other. Having both of them state multiple times how much they enjoyed the fight really enhanced the experience and their friendship. But that's enough about the characters themselves, what's so great about the actual action and choreography of this battle? I think it was great to see some of Ash's usual out of the box strategies here, mainly how he used the field to his advantage. The battlefield is mostly filled with water, giving Pikachu hardly any room to stand and making it seem like it's in Gyarados' favor. Ash is able to find numerous ways to make this battlefield work for him, like using small rocks flying in midair for footing. And possibly the coolest part of the battle is where Pikachu uses its own electricity as footing to get out of Misty's hurricane of water. Really, the only negative I can see in this battle is that it's over so fast. Misty Mega evolves her Gyarados only a minute or two into the battle, and Pikachu lands the finishing blow another minute or two after that. Of course they didn't have the time to write a longer battle because of time constraints within the episode, but it would have been really nice to see some of Misty and Ash's other Pokemon and them battling in a 2v2 or 3v3 battle. But all in all, being longer isn't necessary for this battle, and it's still an amazing match regardless. And thanks to this battle, Ash can finally say he's earned his Cascade badge legitimately. What's up, Lumio's trainers? Lumio's trainers. We are not doing this again. <sighs> Fine. Be like that. Be like that. <laughs> Greetings, my comrades. My name is Zonolith, and I'll be covering number 18, Dawn vs. May. Now, let's be honest, this battle was a treat for all Pokemon anime fans, with two of the show's most popular characters facing off in the finals of the awesome Wallace Cup contest. On one hand, you have Dawn, the character watchers of Diamond and Pearl have followed for the entire Gen 4 anime up till now, but on the other hand, you have Mei, a character a decent amount of Diamond and Pearl watchers have an attachment to from the advanced series. And because the people battling are two super popular characters, it makes it very hard for who to root for. Anyway, on to the battle itself. Man, was this awesome. 
Piplup vs Glaceon was an absolute spectacle, and the two trainers used some pretty interesting moves during the battle, such as Glaceon's combination of Miracle and Secret Power, as well as Piplup using the water in the battlefield to its advantage. The battle was super intense too, with May and Don pretty much being on equal ground the entirety of the battle. Never once was the battle one-sided, it was anyone's win at any time. When I watched this battle for the first time when I was a kid, I was on the edge of my seat, and generally I had no idea who was gonna win. The music choice for the battle was also fantastic, and the voice acting was great in both English and Japanese. These elements elevated the battle and really make you more immersed in the battle between these two coordinators. Now, the winner was also pretty surprising. Also, sorry if I'm spoiling you here, but Diamond and Pearl is literally over 10 years old, so, uh, yeah. Go watch it if you haven't already. The winner is Dawn, which I honestly feel was the right choice. While Mei is obviously the more experienced one out of the two, this is no longer Mei's story. With Dawn winning, it's almost as if the anime is passing the torch to a new female lead, which is really cool. Overall, this battle was awesome. The battle itself, the music, the voice acting, and the dynamic between Mei and Dawn are exactly why this battle has ended up on our list. Greetings trainers, Groblitz here, and let's get started by analyzing a battle that not only ends the Battle Frontier arc, but also the Advanced Generation series as a whole. Number 17 goes to Ash vs May. Despite performance and visual wise not being the bombastic fireworks like many other battles are, this one holds weight. After May's combust can finally evolved into Blaziken and kickstarts not only her independent growth from Ash even further, it also ignites both trainers fighting spirit in a 1v1 match that counts as a proxy vindication to Ash's loss back in Johto Silver League. In this battle, May is finally treated as Ash's equal, not being second fiddle to his achievements anymore and also inspiring him to learn from others and therefore placing contests with the same importance as gym battles. Symphonic Medley being the insert song here, it's perfect, since it was the opening for when both of them rank at the top 8 in their respective competitions back in Hoenn. The activation of their respective abilities was superb, as Septile's Overgrow was an amazing reminiscence to the Norman battle, while Blaziken's Blaze was an amazing foreshadowing to Infernapes for the series after, and also a nice nod to the Kanto's games of Leaf Green and Fire Red. Being a tie really puts them in balance, and dividing the ribbon in half really shows the fruits of their labor and teamwork, one where the novice pupil was able to keep on par with her seasoned mentor, matching him in skill and competence in his home region no less. Truly a remarkable feat and also a proper way to farewell both of our Ruby and Sapphire color protagonists. Both challengers, both unbeatable. If anything, this counts as a graduation match for May, one where her trustworthy starter was able to be on par with Ash's ace of this series, one that even went toe to toe with a Regirock, therefore placing May's prowess on Elite 4 level in her own venue. And with that, only the future can show how much potential can the Princess of Hoenn be able to make it bloom on stage, that being hers or someone else's. Truly a finale that respects both of our heroes' goals. What's up everyone, it's your boy i 7 here to introduce you number 16 on this interesting list, Ash vs Guzma at the Pokemon League. Despite being introduced later to the series, Guzma wasted no time on his immediate impact like putting a burnt mantis in front of a fire cat. Oh, well, never mind. But, in all seriousness, this man started his wreckage path at the Pokemon school with his first battle against Ash, then decided to set his sights on destroying Professor Kukui's dream slash goal, the Aloha Pokemon League. He reaches the semifinals for that destined rematch against Ash, who is pretty much the only actual good chance left that Aloha has to keep the league from being destroyed by Guzman. This battle, in my honest humble opinion, is one of the most tactical and strategic battles in the whole series, especially when it came to how often both trainers strategize and switch their Pokemon to match whatever the other person was going to do. 
Despite all that galaxy chess as previously mentioned, the greatest factor in this battle isn't just that, but it's also the narrative impact that it has on both characters. Especially Guzma, if you look at how the battle strategies here actually show a good drop of the theme of this character we know at that point. And this battle to me is a perfect mirror match for Guzma, just because Ash was the ultimate example for Guzma of what he could have been if he had taken a different path. The mirror match between the characters of Ash and Guzma on the grand stage of a league battle with Guzma being an incredible antagonist for Ash and what ended up happening for both characters after the battle that speaks louder impactful development effect especially for Guzma considering after the stuff he went through in his character arc including this battle he really came out of that arc as a more refined strong and impactful character which is one of the many reasons why Ash vs Guzma is a great battle and one of the best in the series. Hello everybody, Tyrone the Guy 3 here, and coming in at number 15 is Mei vs. Drew at the Kanto Grand Festival. This battle was truly an epic clash of contestant combatants. One is extremely talented, and the other, well, <laughs> she didn't even like Pokemon. Jokes aside, this battle does more than enough to show that Mei's grown a lot since the start of her journey. She uses Combustion and Squirtle in this battle, and that's just not some random choice. We see her dish out a lot of tactics straight from observing Ash's battle with Tactical Tucker. Combining Bubble with Fire Spin for the Water-Fire combination that was nothing short of amazing, and shows that while she's supporting Ash, she's also learning off of Ash on and off the battlefield. Even though Mei fought Absol and Flygon, which were two very powerful Pokemon, Squirtle being the youngest battler on stage still not only held his own, but exceeded all expectations by taking out Flygon with the stylish, experienced timing of Ice Beam. Then we have Combustion, in addition to learning Overheat, Mei showed off her aggressive battle nature that she learned when she was training with Ash. Uh, using the weakened overheat to cushion the blow of the water pulse so that Combustion could wrap things up with a sky uppercut, this battle was intense from start to finish. But wait, I'm forgetting someone. Ah, uh, oh, oh yeah, that's right, Drew. Uh, yeah, so Drew's side of the battle here is brutal in a way we haven't seen in many contests before. The Dragon Razor Wind combo he uses is powerful and it's inescapable. And even when Flygon's knocked out, Squirtle literally doesn't have any time to land on the ground before Absol smacks it across the battlefield for a huge knockout. The attacks in this match feel super personal. Mei wants to prove how far she's come while Drew struggles to maintain his status quo as an experienced, talented coordinator. It's amazing to look back on Mei's debut where she literally fell on her butt and didn't land a single hit on Drew to beating him at the Grand Festival. Even though the tension was at an all-time high, the match does end with them on good terms. With their different battle styles and techniques, they keep pushing each other to not just grow as coordinators, but as people. And that's the best dynamic that you could possibly get from a rivalry. This battle delivers on all fronts. Even though the judgment meter in the contest is bullshit and follows its own rules, but moving on! Hey Pokemon Champions, I'm Champion Blaze, and battle number 14 is the brilliant finale of the Sinnoh Grand Festival, Dawn vs. Zoe. Dawn vs. Zoe is one of the best battles in the entire Diamond and Pearl series because it's strong on multiple levels. It's excellent narratively, has strong writing, very well paced, and had beautiful animation highlights. The battle serves as the culmination to Dawn's entire journey as a Pokemon coordinator. She takes everything she's learned up to that very moment and uses it to damn near win the Grand Festival. It's very fitting that Zoe and Dawn met each other in the finale of the Grand Festival because it serves as a reference to their first meeting in the Jubilife contest where they promised to meet in the finals. Each side had extremely good chemistry with their Pokemon, both trainers put all their skills on the table and even with Dawn's still relatively new Togekiss, performed incredibly well alongside Dawn's Piplup. It's also a Pokemon that Zoe hasn't seen Dawn use before, just like Zoe's Gallade. Both sides improve upon old tactics and strategies they've used before and implement amazing new ones. There's a lot of great back and forth and the battle continues to grow the two trainers by perfectly showing how they react to new situations during the battle. Zoe continues to show how much more experience she has than Dawn which justifies the great lead she takes at the start. But Dawn also proves how adaptable she is as she rolls with the punches really well. She also shows great maturity by not being sad after losing and taking pride in her performance, which is the exact opposite of how she reacted after losing in the Jubilife contest. I wish this battle could be a bit higher, but the fact that it's number 14 just shows how well written this battle really was. And can we just talk about how epic Piplup and Togekiss looked with that Peck Sky Attack combo? Truly remarkable. All in all, this was a perfect Pokemon contest battle that showed just how far both coordinators had come on their journey, showed Dawn at her peak by the end of the series, and is a testament to how great Pokemon contests were in the Pokemon anime. 
Hey everyone, it's Mark. I'm really excited to talk about number 13 on this list, Ash vs. Wolfric. This is the rematch we're talking about, just to be clear. As of right now, this is the last gym battle that Ash has ever had, and wow did they go out on a high note. Ash vs. Wolfric has so many of my favorite aspects about Pokemon battles in the anime. To start with, it's a 3v3 battle that lasts an entire episode, which leads to the perfect pacing for a battle in my opinion. Every knockout felt earned, and there were no easy victories in this match. Both trainers were battling to their fullest potential. Ash and his Pokemon were in rare form, while Wolfric even switched up his strategy from their initial encounter, so we knew he must have something up his sleeve. The highlight of this battle is obviously the climactic showdown between Greninja and Obama Snow. I mean, I'm not even the biggest Ash Greninja fan in the world, I wasn't even watching the anime live at this point in time, but that actually leads me into my favorite part of the battle. When I first watched this match, I had absolutely zero idea that Wolfric was going to mega evolve his Obama Snow, so when I say that my jaw literally dropped when he pulled out his keystone, I mean it. This was such an epic twist after I spent the first half of the battle wondering why Wolfric was saving his Obama Snow for last, so seeing the mega evolve is legitimately one of the most shocking moments in the history of the anime for me. Ash Greninja vs Mega Obama Snow was amazing. Both trainers and Pokemon were working in perfect sync to give us quite the finale to Ash's Kalos Gym Challenge. Challenge. And this battle made Ash look like a genuine contender to win the Kalos League. Personally, this is my favorite gym battle of all time, and it's such an excellent battle overall. Yo, what is up, guys? It is me, the Media Nut, the master of pop culture. Self proclaimed. <laughs> And for this video, I'll be discussing what may be Ash's most important battle during his early years, that being number 12, his battle against the Orange League champion, Drake. What makes this battle so special is that it's not only Ash's redemption for losing the Indigo League, but it's also Ash's first 6v6 battle in the anime. This battle does a good job of showing how far Ash has come by showcasing how powerful and skilled Drake's Pokemon are, only for Ash and his team to be able to take them down one by one. Speaking of Ash's team, another thing that makes this battle so great is that every single one of his Pokemon used, uh, aside from Bulbasaur, gets a chance to shine and showcase just how much they've grown. Pokemon like Squirtle, Pikachu, and Charizard were able to redeem themselves for losing the Indigo League by taking on opponents that were either larger, stronger, or more strategic than them, and, especially in the case of Charizard, use their experience and bond with Ash to come out on top. Even lesser used Pokemon like Tauros and Lapras got a chance to show just what they're made of, the two of them having their battling debut in this match. To add to that, this battle really showed how much Ash has grown as a trainer himself, seeing how this time around he didn't have Brock to coach him like he did in his previous journey. Even when the battle was briefly interrupted by Team Rocket, and even when going up against a Dragonite with way too many moves to count, this showdown was consistently fast paced and kept the focus on what really mattered. Combined with the original series iconic soundtrack, some good old fashioned outside the box Ash thinking, and some very fun matchups, this is the battle that truly painted Ash as a competent trainer, and helped set the stage for future 6v6 and league battles to come. Hey guys, I'm Izzy, and I will be discussing number 11, Ash vs Olympia. This battle's rather unique among Ash's gym battles, as the winning strategy relied upon a Pokeball not featuring at all in the battle as a key player. Even though this was a double battle, and one would expect the display of crazy strategies, Thunder Armor for example, to come from the pairing of Drogadier and Talonflame. As we well know, Ash is extremely creative when it comes to implementing on-the-fly battle strategies, but for me, this is one of the best as it's a perfect example of thinking outside the box, or in this case the battlefield. The problem that they were facing in this battle was the combined issues of the Meowstic's high aerial mobility, amazing synergies with the male's ability Prankster, this giving it the ability to throw out a helping hand to assist a female which then launched devastating attacks. The first two issues are one that Ash is relatively well accustomed to as they're fairly standard later story gym leader strategies, but the issue that had to be overcome that really pushed this battle up is the issue of Future Sight. In the beginning, Ash really struggles with this, as the second he forgets about Future Sight and focuses on the battle in front of him, it sucker punches Frogadier and Talonflame back down to earth. This battle was one that required Ash to multitask, to focus on both the battle in front of him and also the lingering threat of Future Sight. He manages to counter this by utilising assets that one wouldn't necessarily assume Ash to think of, that being a non-battling Pokemon Pikachu, who timed the delay response between Future Sight being set and striking, allowing Ash to gallop Brogadier and Talonflame to throw the Meowstic into Future Sight, being hit by their own attacks. 
This perfectly depicts Ash's maturing battle style, showing he's now capable of higher level strategies, rather than just brute forcing his way through opponents, and that's why it's one of my favourites. This battle also gave us a tease to Satoshi Gekoga. Sorry, I couldn't resist saying at least once in this video. Yo, what's up everyone? Trayman one here, and we've made it to the top 10. To kick off the top 10, we have Ash vs Karina. This battle held a lot of weight in X and Y, as it was built up over the course of a 5 episode arc. We got to dive into Karina's character and build a strong rivalry between her and Ash leading up to this match. With this being Ash's first time battling against Mega Evolution, the stakes were a lot higher than most other gym battles prior, especially with Karina overpowering Ash in battle without Mega Evolution prior to this. One thing that really makes this fight stand out is how both Ash and Karina were aiming to overcome an obstacle that helped their character grow. Ash attempting to use a new strategy that he learned from Tiano that didn't really fit his battle style, and Karina working to be in full sync with Lucario to master Mega Evolution. Karina's skills really shined in this fight, considering that Ash went out of his way to further prepare for this fight by evolving Fletching and catching Halucha, both powerful flying type Pokemon for this fighting type gym. And in the end, Karina was still able to pull a close conclusion. The addition of Evo in the final match made it for an emotional final stand between Pikachu and Mega Lucario, since we witnessed all that they went through to get to this moment with their previous battles and training. The battle animation and strategies were top tier in this battle, with a few notable moments being Halucha's spinning flying press or the increase of speed in Fletchender from his new move, Flame Charge. To this day, this battle stands higher than the rematch in Pokemon Journeys due to all the build up and care they put into Karina's character, making her feel like a fifth companion to the X and Y game. Also, Ash, no more dancing, please. What's going on, Pokechamps? Infamous Trainer here, and taking the number nine spot on this list is Ash vs. Paul at Lake Acuity. Now, this battle is intense. It doesn't just feature our favorite main character, but also one of the strongest rivals we had in the series up to this point, pitting not only their Pokemon against one another, but also their ideologies. Paul believes in harsh training and power makes a stronger Pokemon while Ash is more carefree and believes in his Pokemon no matter what. This battle brings in so many great things on screen as we get to see switching out Pokemon for tight matchups, full on strategies, Pokemon abilities taken into effect, full 6v6 which is rare, and even mid battle evolutions. This battle also debuts another part in the amazing story of Chimchar as it evolves into Monferno during the peak of its rivalry with Paul's Electabuzz. Showing us power of both Pokemon, such as Monferno with Mog Punch and Blaze, and Electabuzz with Light Screen Protect and Thunder with great power. Of course, this battle ends with Electabuzz still standing, and Ash losing as Monferno falls. The best parts about this battle was not only the battle itself, but it was the determination of Paul and his ability to adapt and grow from his losses in a short amount of time, and that's even after losing to Brandon. And Ash, that trainer we thought couldn't lose, actually taking a loss and blow to his pride. This of course pays off in the Sinnoh League, and because of this battle, it makes that one even more intense, hence why it takes the number 9 spot. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and Pokemon fans of the world, your boy Corey here, aka Crasher, and we've now reached number 8. The battle that is the finals of the first ever Alola League, Ash vs Gladian. This wouldn't be the first time Ash made it to the finals either, thanks X, Y, and Z. This match had so much jammed into it. This battle, despite it being only 3 vs 3, was so good and it made you on the edge of your seat from start to finish when you consider what both characters have gone through to get this far, especially in their tough semi-finals battles. My favorite part of this battle was, well, Honestly, I am spoiled for choices. The clash of Melmetal vs. Silvalli was absolutely nice. The ingenious use of Electroweb from Pikachu to add more power to Iron Tail to take out Silvalli. The clash of Z moves between Zoroark and Pikachu. The clash of rival Lycanroc with Midnight Lycanroc vs. Dusk Lycanroc. Now, more on the rival Lycanrocs, these two Pokemon have had an interesting history slash rivalry with each other as the series progressed. From watching Ash's Rockruff evolve into a one-of-a-kind Dusk Lycanroc, to having a battle on Pony Island where Dusk Lycanroc lost, we have the two Lycanrocs squaring off on the grandest stage of them all in a rematch of sorts. Blow after blow, the two put on an absolute clinic. Who can forget that epic finishing blow with the counter being used to counter Midnight Lycanroc's counter attack? Amazing. 
I roared and absolutely flipped my lid when Ash finally achieved the dream of being where he belongs, a champion. Good job, Ashy boy. September 15th shall forever be immortalized as World Ash Ketchum Day. This will forever and always be one of my personal favorite battles across all of the Pokemon series and time and space and more. End of. Woo! What's going on, guys? Tass Official here. And today, I'll be talking about battle number 7, one of the most double-edged bouts the Pokemon series has ever given us. The infamous Colossus League final between Ash vs. Alon. You guys know this is gonna bring back some painful memories, but nonetheless, we'll get through this together. To say this battle hinged on character development and stakes is an understatement, as this was the culmination of everything Ash and his team has worked up to during his Kalos journey. And the same could be said for Alon and his individual journey as well. This battle perfectly captured the motivation of each trainer and the progress they made up to this point. Not only did it do a great job showcasing each of Ash's Pokemon desire to win, but also demonstrate the mountain they had to climb to defeat some of these formidable opponents. From having Pikachu single-handedly take on two pseudo-legendaries, that being Metagross and Tyranitar, to even damaging the almighty Charizard. That's not to say the battle didn't have its fair share of upsets, like Gudra's iconic downfall against Bisharp, and the inevitable defeat of Greninja that changed the course of history for every Pokemon fan going forward. Regardless of the outcome, we got to see firsthand how even with special power-ups like Ash Greninja being introduced to the series, and the new demeanor of Shonen protagonist Ash Ketchum making his debut in X and Y, none of that could save him from accepting total defeat to Alon. And that's what makes this battle all the more iconic, because we got to see our childhood hero truly give it his all, but in the end, it wasn't enough to grant him the win. There's still so much more he has to learn as a trainer before he can fulfill his dream of becoming a Pokemon master. For now though, we got to see him almost reach that goal, and it was almost a beautiful sight to behold. Greetings everybody, my name is KG Prestige and I'll be here to discuss with you all number 6, that being the climax of the Battle Frontier arc, Ash vs Brandon. One of the most satisfying things about this battle was that not only did it wrap up the Battle Frontier arc as a whole, but it also provided a proper conclusion to the original series that came before it. Seeing Charizard, Squirtle, and Bulbasaur reunite with Pikachu to form the team of Kanto once again was a brilliant idea on their part that not only showcased the journey that Ash had gone through, but also showcased just how strong he has become since then. There are three aspects I always look for when watching Ash's battles, and those are the bonds between trainer and Pokemon being tested on the battlefield, the creativity that they can achieve on the spot, and most importantly, having the trainer and Pokemon unite as one. Personally, that is what I appreciate the most for this battle because it manages to deliver on all those parts. For example, when Ash calls out to his Bulbasaur to reminisce about their past experiences together to help it break out of confusion was a great moment. Another example was seeing Ash help calm his Squirtle who was blinded by the sand attack and helping it not only dodge Ninjask but also follow up with Hydro Pump. It was used as a way to wash its eyes out to allow it to see again. It's moments like these that really capture the phenomenon bond that Ash has with his Pokemon, but none could ever capture the moment better than with the moment in the battle between Regice and Pikachu where Ash calls out to Pikachu's heart and asks for a Thunderbolt to which Pikachu responds. Having the last moment of the fight be done while Battle Frontier is playing in the background, that is if you're watching the Japanese version of the anime, was amazing. However, I would be a fool if I didn't also take an opportunity to discuss Brandon's character and the impact he created with this fight as well. He is willing to assist young trainers and offer them advice or even call them out on their foolish mistakes as he's done with past encounters with Ash. His influence is so strong it was even carried to the series after AG, leaving an impact on the story of Ash and Paul. Overall, this battle has done an incredible job at paying tribute to the series past, making an impact in the present timeline, and most importantly, setting up storylines for the future. Truly a phenomenal battle that I can go back to time and time again, and I hope I did my best to explain why that is the case. We are now down to some of the best battles the Pokemon anime has to offer. 
Hello, I am Gui448, and I am moving one of my personal all-time favorite battles, that being number 5, Ash vs. Clemens Gym Battle in XY. The battle in and of itself deserves a spot for 1, wrapping up Clemens' character arc, and 2, being arguably the best 3-on-3 three -three battle we've seen in Pokemon. Even when I rewatch this battle, I still get chills. The music, the action, the animation, it's all just gorgeous to watch. Of course, Clement was all strategy in this fight, trying to calculate every move, while Ash over here is just doing what Ash does. And like any great rivalry, it kept you on the edge of your seat, almost thinking, well, is Ash gonna lose against the science guy? Will he rematch him? Like, What's gonna happen? These kinds of battles against characters who are as likable and well developed as Clement are the best battles we see in Pokemon without a doubt. But it's not all about the great action and fighting we see, but how two main characters show off their growth throughout the series. I mean, XY started out with these two battling each other, and to see the conclusion of that fight that was interrupted by Team Rocket continue in a gym battle later in the series was a nice final touch for the rivalry. I think if Gudra had more screen time in this, he would definitely be ranked number Number one. I mean, he kind of carried the battle, but it is what it is. Hello, my name is Niall, and coming in at number four, we have the iconic clash between Ash and Gary in the Johto League. Although this battle may not compare to today's animation and battle fluency, it definitely holds up as one of the best. And this is mainly because of Ash and Gary's rivalry, which was fleshed out for over 270 episodes, and finally comes to its conclusion here in the Johto League. Narratively, this battle was always going to be amazing. This was the battle that everyone wanted to see, and everyone waited so long for. We wanted to finally see our boy Ash take down Gary. One aspect that I loved about this battle was the different matchups that we got to see. We hadn't seen much of Gary's team, and this battle definitely helped us understand what sort of Pokemon and style he goes for. And then even Ash didn't use his typical team here, with him using Pokemon like Tauros, Snorlax, Muk, and Heracross, which are Pokemon that he'd usually rotate rather than be in main starters. Ash didn't even use Pikachu in this battle, which I found really surprising. The battle had so much tension all the way through, it kept us on our feet, and for a time, Gary was really taking control of this battle, and we started to wonder if Ash could actually win, with Ash down to just his last Pokemon being Charizard, and Gary still having three remaining Pokemon. So it was also a great comeback for Ash. And then the final clash between Charizard and Blastoise was the highlight of this battle. Charizard burning the battlefield was a cool strategy, and of course it had to end the battle off of its signature seismic toss. It was just such a fitting way to end this rivalry. Ash took stick from Gary throughout his whole journey and then finally overcame him here in this battle to really prove to himself and to Gary that he could surpass him. This battle had so many individual moments for both Ash and Gary, with both of them growing even more in this battle. Gary had some huge growth with him finally coming to respect Ash as a trainer who is on the same level as him and even surpassed him at this point. I like how not only this battle makes Gary realise his dream to go into Pokemon research, but also how it wrapped up the original series nicely and put an end to this rivalry in the best way possible. Hey what's going on guys, my name's Raf, and winning the bronze medal on this list is number 3 the battle between Ash and Sawyer in the Kalos League. Besides the outstanding battle choreography and overall hype of this battle, there's a much deeper meaning as to why it's so high on this list. After losing to Ash numerous times, Sawyer continued gaining the knowledge and experience he needed to get better. He successfully acquired 8 Kalos Gym Badges ahead of Ash, and even defeated him before Ash could take on Wolfric. Even then he witnessed Ash lose to the Ice-type Gym Leader, stating that he was so disappointed that the friend he was so inspired by wouldn't have lost. But he didn't lose faith, and this is where it really does shine in their semi-final battle in the Kalos League. This battle was everything put to the test. The strategy Sawyer came up with his Pokemon just showed how much he has developed as a character as well. He extracted knowledge and experience from Ash, his journey, and amalgamated everything into one. Ash too came prepared and also showed off why his amazing battle techniques are a gift to the eye. Sawyer was blessed to battle the true Ash, the one he knew would bounce back after all his flaws like he promised. He wanted to give it his all against his friend, his rival, and his inspiration. Ash falling behind and being scared made him too appreciate Sawyer more, as it allowed him to find his true self again and regain his confidence. But the peak of this battle was when we saw the perfected Koga, sorry, Ash Greninja form, take on the ferocious Mega Sceptile for the first time. This really solidified the story behind the true rivalry of these trainers. All battles before this were when these Pokemon were in their prior evolutionary states. So seeing not only how far both the trainers and Pokemon managed to get, was the epitome of development. Both Ash and Sawyer learned from each other. They learned what the true values are of battling. Not to be overconfident, or scared, and to trust themselves, 
and their Pokemon. They taught each other how to give it their all in battle and also have fun at the same time. But this is what makes the battle incredibly special. When you have a Pokemon battle with such a strong meaning built of not only a rivalry but also friendship that's complemented with an action packed clash of Pokemon, then you know it's going to be a banger. Good morning everybody, good morning, it's JPR and I'm here to cover the second highest ranked Pokemon anime battle. That being Ash vs his Alolan father, Professor Kukui. A battle 140 episodes in the making, being teased as far back as episode 2 of Sun and Moon, doesn't disappoint by any means. Being the anime's first and so far only battle to span nearly 4 entire episodes. Aside from the battle itself, this match arguably has the most legendary team of animators spanning more than 20 years worth of work on the anime. From Mizaki Awane, who animated Ash vs. Blaine in 1998, to Satoshi Nakano, who is head animator for many of XY and Sun and Moon's best looking battles. It also marks the last major battle that longtime composer for the anime, Shinji Miyazaki, worked on before his retirement at the end of the series. Everyone from voice actors to composers to animators bring their absolute best efforts to this project and it really shines through. It honestly is surprising how much this battle accomplishes considering that there really isn't anything at stake. Ash had already become champion of Alola so this battle is purely for fun, which Sun and Moon excels in the most. Having so many episodes to work with gives us a perfect balance of comedic and tense moments throughout the fight, all while giving each of Ash's Pokemon their own distinct moments to shine. Well, except Lycanroc, but he already won the league for Ash, so him taking a backseat here isn't the worst. Melmetal finally scores a win in a serious battle, Naginatl makes its triumphant return, Rowlet takes down a freaking Braviary, Toracat overcomes its rival Incineroar and caps it off with one of the rawest evolution scenes of all time, and Pikachu dukes it out against the guardian of Mele Mele Island itself, Tapu Koko, and wins. Every Pokemon in every storyline throughout Ash's time in Alola gets a remarkably satisfying conclusion in this battle, and truly solidifies Ash as the champion that we all knew he would become one day. Ash's real father may never appear in the anime, but honestly, this battle between Ash and Kikui was more than enough to satisfy myself and many others. It's not only the heartwarming and epic culmination of Ash's Alolan journey, but also the journeys of many of the anime's staff that got us to this point. A truly historic bout that we soon won't forget. Alright, we've reached the very end of the list, but before we go over number 1, here's some quick honorable mentions that were just shy of making the cut. Ash vs B, Ultra Class Battle Ash vs Vizquez Ash vs Iris, Great Class Ash vs Blaine, Rematch and our final honorable mention will be covered by our special guest, Professor Alex Silver. Hi, I'm Professor Silver, and I'll be breaking down the battle between Paul and Brandon in a pyramiding rage. While Brandon used his three legendary titans during the battle, Paul used his Magmar, Hariyama, Electabuzz, Nidoking, Laron, and Ursaring. Paul challenged Brandon because he wanted to affirm his strength, prove his superiority to Ash, and avenge his brother's loss. Despite Paul's confidence in his abilities, however, Brandon swept all six of his Pokémon without losing a single Titan. Paul's loss was significant as it helped him grow as a character and become less malicious towards Ash. Using the learnings he gained from Brandon, Paul supercharged his team's abilities and completely devastated Ash at Lake Acuity. One of the things I love most about the battle is that it greatly expanded Paul's roster of Pokemon. By opening up his ranks, it filled me with wonder at what else he might possess. Another thing I enjoyed about the battle is that it highlights the strength of Ash's Cantonian starters. Given that Paul's team could barely hold their own, it showed that the starter squad had truly ascended to an untold power level far beyond their peers. On that note, let's move on to the next battle. What's up Lumios Trainers? Lumios Trainer Zack here to present the best battle in the Pokemon anime. Number 1 goes to Ash vs Paul in the Sinnoh League. Was it really gonna be any other way? This battle is the best because it's the culmination of everything the Diamond and Pearl anime was building up to since Paul's debut in the second episode. From the moment they met, Ash and Paul hated each other due to their opposing ideologies when it came to raising Pokemon. And after the constant losses against him, except for Pokeringer, and especially after the soul crushing defeat at Lake Acuity, this was Ash's final chance to finally prove to Paul, and more importantly himself, that his methods had its merits. And man did our boy deliver. 
I love how this battle perfectly displays the differences between Ash and Paul's training and battle styles. For instance, although this is the first time Ash gets a big lead on Paul, it was actually part of his master plan to get Ash's hopes up, get a few for the Pokemon he was using, only to counter them with his busted Drapion. No moment showcases that better than when Paul just sat there and let Ash's Torterra heal with Synthesis, only to decimate it the turn after. What a chad. But then there's Ash, who never gave up, and throws Paul off with his unpredictability. The turning point being when Infernape removed the annoying Toxic Spikes by using Flare Blades underground. Paul was not expecting that, and from there, it was anyone's game. This battle also shows how Ash and Paul, who although hated each other because of their differences, ended up inspiring and influencing one another's battle styles as well. Like how Paul used Ash's counter shield against him, or the fact that Ash used Infernape's blaze to win, even though at first he was against the idea of using it. It's nuances like this that show Ash and Paul's growth, and that their ideologies aren't black and white. And coincidentally, that was the next series. Because of this battle, where both Ash and Paul gave it their all as equals, they not only gained a newfound respect for one another, but as Cynthia put it, they formed a bond. There's something truly beautiful about that. It's character development from both ends. But alright, as great as all of that is, the final piece that really brought it all together was Infernape. The Pokemon that Paul abused, the Pokemon that Paul abandoned for being too weak, is now the one that absolutely carries this battle. And it's so damn satisfying. Seeing Infernape using a fully mastered Blaze to help Ash get the win, something Paul was striving for but could never achieve, is not only amazing, but poetic. The use of Type Wild here was also perfect. Having the Ash Ketchum Anthem play here truly cemented this victory as one of the best moments in the Pokemon anime. Thanks for watching everyone and helping us celebrate 25 amazing years of the Pokemon anime. Be sure to check out all the awesome creators who joined in on this project. Maybe you found someone new that you like. Until next time though, make sure to live your life to the fullest and have yourself a damn good one.